Hey there, FakeFox here. Welcome to my update 35 overview. In this video, I will talk about everything that changed for PvE healers with Lost Depth. We will first go over the new content and then talk about the Healing Over Time rework and a few other changes. So as a dungeon DLC, Lost Depth brings two new four-player dungeons with four sets each. Earthen Root Enclave has a set meant for healers. Unfortunately, it is really bad. Stone's Accord buffs Minor Berserk and Resolve to healed allies. Yeah, that's literally Combat Prayer as a 5-piece bonus. So why would you ever choose that over just using Combat Prayer? But the monster set from the same dungeon is actually interesting. Ashruit Devrick applies major vulnerability for 7 seconds with a 15 second cooldown when dealing damage with a heavy attack. With how the set works mechanically, maximum uptime is around 45%, but all in all, that is pretty strong. We will have to see if it is worth using for optimized major vulnerability. Probably not though. Apart from that, the set can be used very effectively by a healer across the board when major vulnerability is simply missing. So new content is done. Let's continue with the balancing part. Healing over time abilities were rebalanced, with the goal of decreasing the effectiveness of targeted or sticky healing and increasing the effectiveness of static healing. The patch notes section is not particularly insightful though, so to see what is really going on we will now go over some healing abilities. Here I've listed the duration, tick rate and how much the healing per second roughly changed. Here we also see that the categorization into targeted and static healing doesn't really work. For example, purifying light is technically targeted I guess on an enemy, but the healing part is clearly static. I guess it is falsely treated as a targeted healing ability though, at least that's the only way I can explain a tick rate reduction and 66% lower HPS. But questionable categorization aside, what we see are some massive healing reductions on very impactful skills with radiating regeneration, illustrious healing, spirit vendor and refreshing path. On the other hand, the healing increases on other abilities are rather small except for Ring of Preservation, which is getting a 139% buff. On average, tick rates are also reduced and durations slightly increased. So how does it translate into actual gameplay? It is noticeable. While total healing is still more than enough, it just feels more stressful and inconsistent to heal, especially when players have to do high damage mechanics outside of a stacked group. The nerfs can really be felt. Making endgame content more accessible didn't age well. Casual groups without the tactics, discipline and damage to play as a stack group all the time feel the reduction in positioned independent healing the most. Healers with slower reaction times and less situational awareness suffer more from the changes while elite players can adapt and move on far easier. In my opinion, this is the worst patch in ESO history. Not really for how it actually affects the gameplay, but for how abysmally it fails to reach its proclaimed goals. So how do we adjust and move on then? Strategic placement of our AoE hots is more important than ever. We can spread them a bit more, utilizing the increased healing on some of them to give our group more space to safely move around in. If players have to move outside of the group, we can decide if we either want to place an AoE hot on their position while otherwise concentrating on the group or we leave everything on the group while more closely watching the players outside to then react with burst healing. We should also really utilize Echoing Vigor. It is insanely strong at the moment. Used correctly, it beats pretty much every other healing ability. While it is not completely reliable, we can get it on more than 6 players at once, and it then heals even more than ground-based hots while also allowing players some mobility. But apart from that, there isn't really any significant change for healers. There is no point doing completely different builds or farming new sets. What was the best before the patch is still the best now. It is just a bit weaker and played a bit differently. Should you really struggle to keep your group alive, you can of course try out defensive sets, but the sets themselves did not change, so unfortunately you still have the same downsides and generally underwhelming performance of damage mitigation sets. And we also have to consider damage output. The health of bosses was reduced by 10%, but we lost significantly more than 10% DPS, making it even harder to justify a defensive playstyle now. Okay, so for the final part of this video, I will go over the specific changes for classes, weapons and gear. 
First of all though, the duration of many damage over time abilities was increased, usually to 20 seconds. For healers this is generally a good change as it simply means less recasting to keep up times of support effects. This isn't completely consistent though, so I will go over all the important ones individually. Starting with the Dragon Knight, Engulfing Flames now lasts 20 seconds, actually 24 with the Ardent Flame passives. Cinder Storm has one extra healing tick, so it's ever so slightly better, or less bad. I'm really surprised this skill wasn't properly adjusted. And lastly, Igneous Weapons now lasts 72 seconds, taking passives into account. Moving on to Necromancer. Boneyard is significantly cheaper now, but also deals less damage. Skeletal Mage lasts 20 seconds, up from 16. Need for keeping up the passives, and given the drastic nerf to Spirit Mender, it is probably the better pet option anyway. Empowering Grasp now lasts 10 seconds, which would be great, but Empower was changed to only affect fully charged heavy attacks, so Necromancer actually took a massive hit to its support here. Then restoring Tether's tick rate was cut in half, but the healing only increased by 81%, so it is overall a bit weaker. It's still a strong healing ability though. And now to that poor ghost. Spirit Mender's healing was reduced by 48%, almost cut in half. Spirit Guardian might still be worthwhile for the 10% damage mitigation. This was also changed a bit, so it now actually dies after you take 300,000 damage which would be over 18,000 per second, so it should usually still run out before it dies. Next up is the Nightblade. Blur and its morphs have an additional effect now. Taking direct damage builds up stacks that reduce the cost of dodging. Blur was already a very strong defensive ability and a good option for proccing hemorrhage. This buff is very nice given that using stamina to heal is even more important now. The Dot of Lotus Fan was increased to 20 seconds, but the Mind of Vulnerability actually remains at 10 seconds. Aspect of Terror now inflicts major cowardice. It lasts 12 seconds, has no cooldown, and can affect bosses. This is actually insane. Major cowardice is a 430 weapon and spell damage reduction. It's difficult to say how it exactly works as we don't know the damage stats, scaling coefficients and so on of PV enemies. But from my testing, in VAS, it is an average damage reduction of 18%. So Nightblade is once again seeing some substantial buffs, but on the flip side, Refreshing Path was nerfed by 35%. It's not that big of a deal though. Further, Debilitate lasts 20 seconds now, also extending the Minor Magicka steal to about 24 seconds. And lastly, Healthy Offerings, Minor Mending lasts 10 seconds now. Not too relevant though, as we want to cast it every 4 seconds anyways for the passives. For Sorcerer, Dark Exchange was changed a bit, but overall it does the same thing, spending one resource to restore another with pretty much the same efficiency. Empowered Ward now buffs both Mind Intellect and Endurance, so at least in that aspect Sorcerer can now finally keep up with other classes. More of that please. And there actually is more. The synergy of Storm Atronach now goes to 6 players rather than just 1. Actually amazing, Sorcerer now has a pretty strong unique ultimate for dungeon content. But that's already it, unfortunately no changes to Sorcerer's healing. Next up is Templar. Spear Shots received a noticeable cost reduction, but it's still Necrotic Orb ordered on Wish. And then as already mentioned, Purifying Light's duration was increased to 10 seconds, but the healing reduced by 66%. Not that this was a relevant healing ability to begin with, but it's still just odd. Healing Ritual now lasts 30 seconds and heals like 2% more. Hasty Prayers Mine Expedition lasts 10 seconds, up from 5. Not sure if that's ever relevant. And lastly, Restoring and Radiant Aura now buff Minor Intellect and Endurance to allies, similar to the buff that Sorcerer has received instead of the Mana Magicka steal. This is great as those effects are far more relevant, giving Templar a bit stronger support. It's unfortunately still far from good. And now to the most important question, is Warden getting buffed again? Of course it is! Falcon's Swiftness now gives 4 seconds of snare immunity, making Warden even more mobile. Swarm now lasts 20 seconds, including the Mana Vulnerability. Budding Seed's hot component heals 3% more. 
Nature's Grasp unfortunately heals 33% less, but nobody was using that anyway, at least in PvE. Arctic Blast has offensive stat scaling now and has a 15% increased status effect, aka Mana Brittle chance. Not sure if this becomes relevant, but I at least wanted to mention it. And lastly, Frozen Armor was almost doubled, but that's also kind of whatever. So nothing too crazy this time, but I still think Warden Healer comes out of this patch even more dominant than before. Continuing with the weapons. For Destruction Staff, Wall of Elements now costs less and lasts longer, quite nice. Frost Clench's cost is doubled, which sucks for Brittle builds. But on the other hand, the range was increased to 28 meters, which is good for kiting on Brittle builds, for example in Cloud Rest. Moving on to the Restoration Staff. Grand Healing lasts longer and heals 9% more. Healing Springs lasts 10 seconds now and Illustrious Healing 15. Both having the same HPS now, as Illustrious Healing lost its 50% increased healing. The tooltip of Illustrious Healing is currently bugged, not properly calculating the total healing from the increased duration, so don't get confused here, it actually works just fine. Healing Spring's Magicka Return was changed to Regeneration, so it has scaling now. Since both morphs have the same HPS, the choice really comes down to how frequently you will recast it. If you overcast it anyway for the Master Staff or Ultigen build, Healing Springs should be the better morph now. Regeneration heals 40% less, Rapid Regeneration now scales with missing health though, but it's still significantly weaker overall. Radiating Regeneration is in my opinion still worth using in many situations, but you just can't really rely on it anymore to just passively keep allies outside the group alive. Then for the Fighter Skilled, Ring of Preservation costs significantly less, lasts 10 seconds instead of 8, and heals 139% more. This is pretty juicy. I think Ring of Preservation was seriously underrated anyway, and now it is absolutely one of the best healing abilities. Moving on to Alliance War, Echoing Vigor lasts 16 seconds now, but heals 17% less. But as I already said, I think the skill is actually even better now. Because we can cast it multiple times to get it on more players, the increased duration has a huge effect on the overall healing we can get out of it. Hands down the best hot in the game now for how well it works mechanically and how much total HPS it also produces. And with that we only have the item sets left to talk about. The Master Restoration staff returns 53% more resources now. I don't think this is overly relevant, as the Master Restoration stuff is just a filler weapon anyway, but it's still a nice buff that might be felt in some encounters. Powerful Assault lasts 15 seconds now instead of 10, which is very nice with the longer lasting Vigor, and a 2 meter increased radius is also very welcome. So that was update 35. If you have any further questions, please feel free to ask me in the comments below, and as always, Thanks for watching, see you.